Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of uh, Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is I am an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell, which actually we have offices. There were 20 of us here in Westboro. This is not my about elder law. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the senior centers in th this area, uh, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means Westboro, that means here. They don't want to go move with their kids in San Diego or Boston or any place else. And so the point of this show is to let you, if you identify with Frank and Mary, uh, know the things that the people you need to know and the programs that you need to know about to stay right here. If you want to just stay here in your community and Shel Shelby continues to find these great people. My friend Shelby Marshall is my co-host on this show. I convinced her uh, a long time ago to do these with me uh, because everybody knows her um, and she knows everybody. So she finds these great guests one of whom we've had on our show before, and the other is a new, a new but rising star on our show. And uh, so, Shelby, whom do we have today, and what are we going to talk about? Yeah, good morning, Arthur. Great to see you again. Um, someday we'll be back in person, although I do love this uh, remote connection. I feel connected to you and our guests, uh, sort of no matter how the technology, uh, the technology that is uh, behind the scenes. So. Um, so I want to welcome Kelly Petralia back. Kelly is the executive director of Westboro Connects. She'll refresh our viewers' uh, memories of what Connects is all about in just a moment. And our other guest is Janet Hart. Janet is a, Janet will introduce herself, but she's a, a board member of Westboro Connects and she's going to talk to us today about a uh, new program that Westboro Connects is organizing to connect people in our community. So let's first start with um, our new guest and allow her to introduce herself, a little bit about the background about you, Janet, so our viewers know, and then we'll switch to Kelly, who will tell us about uh, Connects. Well, thank you very much, Arthur and Shelby and Kelly for having me on. And um, yes, I've, I have lived in Westboro for about 15 years now. I'm basically a Massachusetts girl, was educated, um, in my high school days in Massachusetts, college days in Massachusetts, and um, and have had a, a, a fun career, 20 years in business, and the last 15 years I've been teaching at Armstrong Elementary School. I've been teaching grade three. Um, however, I just retired about a year ago, and that freed up my time so I could get involved with Whisper Connects as a board member and volunteer. And uh, that's what I'm here to talk about today, Whisper Connects. Now, Arthur, you'll notice there's a little more than just a Massachusetts accent in there, which tells us that M Mrs. Hart, as I call her, you know, her her experience extends internationally. So that's that's yeah. for a different show. Uh, yeah. Kelly, uh, Kelly, welcome back. Um, again, introduce yourself, please, and uh, talk a little bit about getting on. What is Westbrook Connects and uh, the mission and purpose? So then we can kind of get into the program that we want to talk about today. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be back. I love this show. So thank you so much for having me back. Um, I am the executive director of Westboro Connects. I've been in that role officially um, since about February. And um, prior to that, I was a volunteer for over two years as we were sort of building the organization from the grassroots up um, under the guidance of a, an organization in Natick called Spark Kindness. So, so that's connects connects to me. I'm also a board member in full disclosure. I'm really proud to be part of the organization. And what I love about connects is it's all it's all about creating a kinder, connected, more resilient community. And those connections are intended to extend to all ages uh, and you know businesses and residents and um, and visitors. So, um, but Janet is on today to talk to us about a specific program Westboro Connects is launching. So Janet, what's the program and why will our viewers, particularly Frank and Mary, be interested? Yes, well, we're gonna have a throwback to a, an old fashioned phrase, which is pen pals. And um, some of us will that. very clearly remember when we were young people that we had a pen pal. And in fact, I think 
pen pal writing really took off about uh, 50, 70, 90 years ago, back in like the, the 30s. And, um, and I don't need to go too much into what it involved, but usually a teacher in school would assign you a pen pal. You would write back and forth to him or her, and you would learn about their culture, where they lived, how much snow they had, if they celebrated certain holidays. And um, I know that my memories of being a pen pal were really close to my heart. I used to love waiting for the letter to come through the door slot in the house and be on the doormat waiting for me. And um, and it was something that was very private to me. I grew up in a big family of seven kids. So when that letter came, that was just for me. And I would sneak off to my room and read the letter. And then I would put them in my dresser drawer and keep them week after week after week after year. Sadly, I've fallen out of touch with my pen pal. It's been a lot of years and I can't even remember her her name um but but anyway so pen pal writing I remember her name but you can remember the experience it's not yes. about anything she said it's exactly it's that that it's feeling your, of yeah. what's well, that feeling of being connected to something outside your immediate environment and um and really like having someone who cares someone who's looking forward to getting your letter um, someone who wants to share things with you and you want to share things with, with him or her, perhaps even sharing things that you can't share with your neighbor or someone in your family. And um, so I haven't had a pen pal for decades and decades. Now my mail consists of flyers, bills, and junk mail. Um, but I think that there is a wonderful opportunity to um, do a program in Westboro that connects people from different generations. And, um, and so we're calling it the pen pal program. And um, in particular, in today's show, I would love to encourage people who are perhaps in their 70s, 80s and 90s um, to take part in this program. And I can explain how it's going, going to work. Um, I think that writing is a really good way of expressing ourselves, our thoughts, our concerns our times of happiness and joy, our memories. And, um, and there's tons of data that, that states that writing your thoughts is a very freeing experience and a way to connect with others. And so um, myself and others at Westboro Connects had this great idea that this autumn, when the days are shorter, the nights are longer, we have Thanksgiving and the Christmas wintry holidays, that it might be a time when people are feeling a bit isolated, a bit lonely, in particular with COVID-19 upon us as well. You know, right now there's been five months or so of people, let's say, living in assisted living homes who just haven't been able to have visitors or they've only been able to have, I think recently, a visitor for maybe a, a half an hour time slot. Um, I know in my particular situation, I've um, supported people family members in assisted living places or independent places um, through their 70s and 80s and 90s. And right now, getting a letter for them, I know because I write to my 88-year-old dad, is wonderful. Now, I have to say, and this is important, he can't read my writing because I write the chicken <laughs> scratch. It's terrible. And so I want to reassure anyone who's going to get involved in this program you don't need to have good handwriting. I definitely do not. But um, the view was that maybe between October 1st and January 1st, we could run a program where people within Westboro write back and forth to each other. We would ask that each person write twice so that if someone signs up for the program, they don't feel let down with just one letter. So we say a minimum of two letters being sent each. And um, the letter can be a handwritten letter sent through the mail. It can be an email. Um, and if indeed someone watching the show might live in a, an assisted living, an independent living, a nursing home, or wherever they might live, might be living alone at home and they can't you know, get to a mailbox, um, we're going to put up on the screen in a little while my email address and my home, um, my home email address and um, I'm not sure we're putting my cell phone number on, but anyway, there'll be information for uh, people to contact me. Whatever you'd like, we have the power. Okay, great, great. 
So I, I can go on and on because, you know, I've given a lot of thought to the program. Um, I really want it to succeed because I really think it would be great if we could have people from different generations writing to each other. But one of the things I wondered about is how people might feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't know, would someone not want their address out in the public? And what I wanted to do was to assure anyone listening who wants to take part that this isn't going to be some computerized data <laughs> database with all your information in it. Really what we need is your, your name, your address, and if you want to provide any interest you have, do you like watching crime TV shows? Yes, I do. Um, do you like doing puzzles? No, I don't. I realized I don't during COVID. I tried, but I don't. <laughs> um, do you like gardening? Whatever you might like, you can share with me. And then, honest to goodness, sitting at my kitchen table here in Westboro, I will have piles of pieces of paper that say, you know, Joanne Smith or, or, or you know, uh, Fred McKenzie. Um, they're interested in racing cars and, I don't know, gardening, and I will put them together. The information will go no further. I'm going to work with another woman in town. Her name is Roberta. We're going to sit at the table. And we're just going to match people up. So um, once we do that, we're expecting the last two weeks of September that um, the pen pals will get a note from me that says, you know, hi, Shelby. Thanks for your interest. Your new pen pal is Arthur, <laughs> and this is his information. And then after that, we, we kind of see that we would take a back step and the two pen pals would write back and forth to each other, at least until January 1st. After that, if they want to continue, fantastic. Yeah, that's great. And if not, at least this autumn, you know, three month period might be a little bit brighter for some people. Why well, um, love this program? I, 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 full I, idea. Myself. I think I might. So. When, so when I, oh, go ahead, Arthur, please. No, 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 so so uh, uh, once again, if, as, as you know, like you, uh, you know, people that actually remember this stuff, you know, from when, they, when this was done. Ha have you seen, first of all, I love the idea that you're doing it for this period. Because we know that you know, it's some someday there'll be a vaccine, and and you know, the optimists say soon, soon, but nobody really says before January. So the notion of dealing with this period is mm. terrific, and, and you know, I find I get so many clients who are in this situation because they have taken COVID seriously. Mm -hmm. They know that other pe many people don't, many people do here in Massachusetts, but still many people don't, and so they are afraid, and they are staying home, and they're just dying just being at home you know and and so the idea of this is terrific i was wondering that when you decided to do it have you have you are you found any place that they've tried this and because i'm I, i'm so it seems like younger people are so unaccustomed to this notion of actually doing a letter very you know, true. A, a huge thing. yeah well i have to say that kelly and i spoke about it several months ago i think back in january and then unexpectedly, something came across my, my Facebook page and it was a picture of um, pe seniors, probably 70, 80, 90 years old, holding whiteboards that said, hi, my name is Joe. I'm interested in the Patriots, can't stand the Yankees, and I'd love someone to write to me. And then there was a picture of a, a, a woman with her whiteboard that said, you know, I'm Miriam, I'm interested in X, Y, Z. And that made me start thinking even more, gosh, this is a great time to actually write back and forth to each other. And we have um, already people who are interested and ready to go. And so the real push right now for me is, is to make sure that there's people out there who we're not missing, um, who maybe aren't connected on social media, haven't seen anything on Facebook, um, haven't, you know, we have a, um, a Westboro Connects newsletter that goes up to loads and loads of people. Maybe they're not on that mailing. And so we're really looking for those people who, who may like want to get involved some, somehow, but don't know how to get involved in their community. Right. And also um, people who we know, for example, you know, I may know someone who I've met over the time, over the years, and I think, you know what, he or she could really use a pen pal right now. And so I'm asking people who are listening today to reach out to them and say, hey, I heard about a pen pal program. All you need to do is contact Janet Hart, give her your name and address, 
And by October 1st, you'll get something in your mail that says, I want to introduce you to your new pen pal. That's great. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Kel. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to say that I, I love this program so much. And the fact Janet is is spearheading this and just it's just such a wonderful idea. And one of the other things that I think um, really this, well, first of all, this connects to our work of connecting people, right? And, you know, a generation ago or two generations ago, you knew everybody in town. Either you were related to them in this small town or you knew them. But that's not the case anymore. And so I think this is also an opportunity. I mean, certainly there are people that have been here for generations still, but there are people that are new as well. And I think there's a real opportunity when we can't be face to face. We're not doing a lot of you know, outward facing in-person programming right now where people have an opportunity to meet and discuss and talk, it feels a li very lonely. And it also can feel like we don't have a lot in common with each other, particularly in social media. Sometimes you can see a lot around what divides us versus what connects us. And I think this is a real opportunity for Westboro residents to talk to fellow Westboro residents and get different perspectives on their lives and just share, you know, things that they might have in common as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I, I love this idea. Uh, you know, Kelly, you just said something that reminded me. I had coffee with someone who I know pretty well. They had that coffee that this morning. And this person has deep, deep roots in Westboro. And so we were talking about, well, you know, so-and-so and that person knows so-and-so. And, and then, you know, we we're talking about, and you know, that person did so-and-so and I, you know, and then even talking with the person I was having coffee with about their own personal history, I was like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> that person did that. And so, um, and I, I always fundamentally go back to we are, we all have much more in common than we have differences. And, and when we, when we share the things that we have in common, it gives us an opportunity to talk in a different way about our differences. And at least, you know, might not agree to them. And I know that's not the point of this pen pal program, but you know, those conversations may go that way. Uh, um, uh, but um, it gives us an opportunity from which to have a conversation from a kind and connected uh, basis. Um, mm -hmm. And and maybe to you know open our eyes a little bit more to what's going on on the other side of town, so to speak, with someone like you never whose circles and paths may never have crossed your own. So uh, I, I love this program. One question I had, um, so Janet, you mentioned the handwriting, so that's an important one because you know Frank and Mary as they get older, they may have some challenges writing, so they could certainly type it if that's their preference. Um, yes. And it doesn't have to be a novel. It's really a, you know, it could be a bulleted newsletter here or, you know, an, uh, excuse me, letter, right? Here's what's going yeah. on in my life, what's going on in yours. Um, do you anticipate maybe to jumpstart this or have you thought about maybe giving folks some cues? Like, here's some things like in that initial, like, here's the intro, Arthur, meet Shelby, Shelby, meet Arthur. As you get started, here are some things you might consider talking about. Or I think that's, that's a great idea. We actually um, have prepared a half slip of paper to leave at places like the Beaumont, the Willows, um, Highlands, um, different facilities that actually asks people, and I have one here, it's very short, that oh, actually right. asks people um, to share your hobbies. Are you interested in puzzles, gardening, music, reading, travel, sports, anything else you want your new pen pal to know? And just, as you said, a jumping off point. But what I would also stress is sometimes we think we have nothing to share, especially if we've been isolated for a while. Yeah. Um, and so we think, well, who would, who would want to write to me? My, my kids are, you know, are old, my grandkids and my great grandkids, you know, uh, who's interested? And what I would say is don't underestimate yourself. You've got stories in you that you don't even remember you have. And through writing with a pen pal, some of those old stories just might might rise to the surface. And in doing so, bring the writer joy and also bring the receiver joy. Right. I think about um, it just maybe maybe it's the hutch behind you, but it just occurred to me when you said th people think about like, what would I talk about? Right. So I think about if my grandmother were alive today, she would say, bah, I am, you know, well, who am I going to talk about? You know, I talk to my kids and my I think about her tea, her tea, um, teacup collection, mm -hmm. right? and I can picture it on her wall and how she loved it. She never drank from them. They were on the wall, and no, she, I forbid, she, she, break, she might break them. 
Good. Right. Yeah. Well, they were just for show, but she right. she started this and she filled the whole, I mean, that in and of itself would be a story, but she could tell you stories about where she got each one of them and why she liked them or whatever. And it, again, I use that as a simple example of, you know, I, I started this collection and I never use them, but, and I don't even like tea, you know what I mean? But I mean, that's like a, a, you know, a story that could could go into, you know, someone like yourself, Janet, saying, oh, tea? I lived in a country where tea was a very important part of my day, right? Right? So, very much so. Very much so. And, and I guess that, re that really speaks to something that Janet had, or uh, Shelby, you had mentioned kind of early on that Westboro, the Westboro of 70 years ago, or 60 years, God, 70 years ago when I was born, Right. Uh, the Westboro of back then was one in which you tended to, to know a lot of these people right off the bat. The Westboro of today has that tremendous amount of diversity as a result of this these kinds of changes. So people can be oftentimes just sharing things from a place that isn't here, right, which could be very special to a person who is who is from here. You know, yeah. that, that's a really interesting way of looking right. at it. Or finding common ground of, you know, my family's history here is X and the person on the other end is coming from a completely different culture and maybe part of the world. And they're finding like, well, my family, we were farm, you're farmers here and we were farmers there. And isn't that like an interesting connection? I don't know. But I think the program, uh, I, I love it. I think it's just such, we, we've had a lot of fun on these shows. I think we, we share a lot of really valuable information, but this one in particular is right up Frank and Mary's alley. And I would I would really encourage folks to not be intimidated by this, to really say, you know what? Like it's two letters, right? It's, it's a piece of paper, um, a, a pen and a, a stamp, right? And, you know, and, and, and I also want to stress the, the, that information is not going to be shared outside of your kitchen table, Janet. Um, I think well, folks, you know, in this day and age, you know, don't want to find themselves on any more mailing lists no. unless they want to, you know, with their permission. Um, um, although selfishly as a Westboro Connects board member, when you do that first mailing to folks, I would encourage you to put the most recent newsletter in there. Sorry. That's just, That's just so idea. they know about Connects. <laughs> Let me make a note. That's a great idea. Um, um, because I do think, uh, you know, if it furthers the mission and more people need to know about this great organization. So, um, and, and so I just, I just want to add two things. First, this is really wonderful. Um, and is so wonderful that we spent the whole show talking about it, which was the point. But I, I but I wanted, I wanted to know, you know, before we go today, I wanted to know from Kelly if there are any other particular things, you know, in 30 seconds or a minute, other things that you're thinking about doing. And then I want to know from Shelby, you know, from so what's going on, what's going on in town? Because we always try to give you a few minutes at the end to kind of keep us in touch with what's going on. Kelly? Sure. Yes, we have been um, throughout the past several months, we've been doing both some outward facing, but not in the same typical way. Um, you know, we haven't been hosting our, our big programs except for one virtual program that we did host, but we've been doing things that Janet has been involved in and Shelby and others like chalking the walks and, and bridging, you know, bridging communication and continuing with our newsletter to kind of bring people together. And so now we're turning our focus and have been looking at our planning with our Square One um, partners, which are Westboro Public Schools, West Westboro Youth and Family, and the Rotary Club of Westboro. And that's really our programming around mental health, um, substance use uh, prevention and education, and different other protective factors that really help make um, a resilient community. So we have two programs that we're looking ahead to the fall. One is around tech safety and digital citizenship. And the other is around anxiety and children and families. Um, and so really trying to build resources and support. Sorry about the background noise there. Um, and then we're also really busy um, with our partners uh, um, planning for the Martin Luther King, our third annual celebration in January. Um, and that's with um, the Westboro Interfaith Clergy, the Westboro Public Schools and Central Mass Connections and Faith. So that is a wonderful collaboration that continues and plans as well. So, and then we continue to have our monthly newsletter and as needed, we do other bulletins around programs and resources that we think are important to share with the community. And we have some other fun things that are in beginning stages really around connection. Yeah, and I also want to add that uh, uh, Kelly and her team 
have harnessed the uh, sewing power of the community and provided masks uh, to folks of all ages. They've worked with the um, uh, with the senior center uh, to ensure that seniors have masks, as well as working now with the schools to ensure that they have a each school has a handful of masks uh, to help uh, you know as as we uh, bring kids back. So. Uh, lots of different ways Connects is engaging. Um, Arthur, I, Shelby, what's going on? What's yeah, going so, on? So uh, quickly, I want to um, just uh, give folks a heads up. Last night at our Board of Selectmen meeting, our town manager talked about the staffing study that is finalized. It's out on the town's website. Um, and now we begin the aspects of kind of um, dissecting it and implementing it. Um, so there's good conversation around that in the first of many. So I would encourage folks to check that out. At our Board of Selectmen meeting um, on September 8th, our Chief of Police will be coming before us to, to give us an update on policies and procedures and the accreditation process, something I know the town is acutely interested in and, and um, uh, certainly important that we engage with and understand the work of our police department. Um, and our director of uh, DPW director, Chris Payne, will be on to talk about sidewalks and uh, road maintenance and management. Uh, again, something uh, lots of folks are passionate and interested about. Um, we have not yet set the date for the special town meeting nor the fall town meeting, but I anticipate we'll do that at our next meeting. And um, then I would also uh, in, um, share with you that on the 22nd in our Board of Selectmen meeting, our legislative delegation will be before the board uh, to uh, talk about, uh, you know, all things state and municipal, um, certainly COVID related as well. So lots, lots going on. So. Lots going on. And once again, I think that's one of the, the useful pieces of this show is that for folks, for people like Frank and Mary, you just want to stay in touch and can through through the wonderfulness of Westboro Cable, right? Yep. That you kind of yes. you kind of know what's coming. So Janet, good luck with this. This is just what you know. It's wonderful, you know. And I hope people just take a shot. You know, it's 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 from it's new. It's new because it was it's was from long ago. And just to give people, just to give them a shot, you know, to Thank connect. You. I, I I would agree. I just think give it a try. Give it a try. Up your alley. It's two letters. That's it. Kelly, you guys just keep innovating. Every time's a new, everything you guys do is just like a new adventure. So we really appreciate it. And Shelby, thanks very much for the update, uh, yeah. which we'll continue to have. And folks, we hope you enjoy these shows. Uh, if you've got any suggestions regarding shows, please contact Westboro Cable or type to our, my friend Shelby Marshall. Uh, in the meantime, we will see you next week in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>